chapter three. Secret Mystery Guy. Me and my bestest friend Grace rode the bus home together. That's when I told her about Miss and her secret house. Miss is a secret mystery guy, I said, because she won't answer any of my questions. And so now I have curiosity about her. That Grace wrinkled her eyebrows. Me too, she said. Now I have curiosity about her too. I patted her again. Mm, yeah, only too bad, Grace. But you can't have as much as me, because I said it first. Remember that. That Grace did another huffy at me. Whoops, your nose is still whistling, Grace, I said. A few minutes later, I got off the bus. I run to my house like a speedy rocket. Grandpa, Grandpa, I shouted, very excited. It's me, it's Junie B. Jones. My, I'm home from my school. Grandma Miller babysits me and baby Ollie when mother is at work. She was in the kitchen feeding Ollie sprained peas. Guess what, Grandma? Guess what? My teacher is a secret mystery guy, and she won't tell me where she lives, only I want to go to her house very bad. Grandpa Miller shushed me. There's no need to shout. Grandma, my goodness. Grandma Miller shushed me. There's no need to shout, Judy B., she said. I'm right here. Yeah, only I can't help it, Grandma, because I have curiosity about her. Grandma Miller did a little smile. Curiosity killed the cat, you know, she said. Then my mouth went open, and my eyes got very big, too. What cat, Grandma? Where did the curiosity kill it? Was it in the street by my school? Because I saw a squished cat in the street by my school. Only Polly Allen Popper said it got run over by an ice cream truck. Grandma Miller looked at me for a very long time. Then she went to the sink, and she took an aspirin. Just then, I heard a noise at the front door. And its name is Mother, who's home from work. Mother, Mother, I have an I have a important note from from Miss Miss, cause you and me are going to bake delicious cookies, and then we can take them to her house and see where she lives. Mother read the note. The note says to take the cookies to school, Junie B, not to your teacher's house. Yeah, only I already know that. But my teacher is a secret mystery guy, and she won't tell me where she lives. And so you and me have to find it out ourselves. Mother shook her head. No way, Toops, she said. Yes way, I hollered. We have to, because now I've got curiosity in me, and I have to find out where her house is, or else Grandma said I'm going to get run over by an ice cream truck. Then Mother did a frown at Grandma, and Grandma took another aspirin. Your teacher is not a secret mystery guy, Junie B, said Mother. She's just a regular person with a regular family, and there's no way that you and I are going to bother her at her house. I stamped my foot. Yes, we are. We are, too, because I want to. That's why. After that, I got sended to my room because of no shouting and no stomping my foot. Only I never, ever heard of that dumb rule before. I shut my door very angry. Then I put my head under my pillow, and I called Mother the name of Pee-wee Head. And guess what else? I said, very quiet. Teachers are not regular people, so there. Ha ha. Chapter 4. Cookie Mix and Stuff. The next day was Saturday. Saturday is the day me and Mother go to the grocery store. I have rules at that place. Like no hollering the words, I want ice cream, and no calling mother the name of Big Meanie when she won't buy it, and no eating a bag of marshmallows that don't belong to me. Or else the, the store guy yanks it away from you and he says, eating is the same thing as stealing, young lady. Then he, ta he takes you to your mother and she has to pay for the whole entire bag, except for I don't know why, because I only ate three of those softy guys, and that's all. The carts of the grocery stores have seats in them. That's where babies sit, only not me, because big girls get to walk all by themselves. And guess what else? One time, Mother even let me push the whole big cart without any help, except for then some baked beanies got knocked off their shelf, and Grandma got her foot caught in my tire, and so now I have to wait till I'm bigger. My favorite aisle is where the cookies are. That's because sometimes there is a lady at the table there, and she gives me and mother cookie samples, and we don't even have to pay for them. Their name is Freebies, I think. Only too bad for me, because this time the lady wasn't there. Darn it, I said, very disappointed. No Freebie lady. 
Mother smiled. That's okay. When we get home, we're going to bake our own cookies for Grandparents' Day, remember? Won't that be fun, she asked. I made my shoulders go up and down. That's because I was still mad at her for not taking me to my teacher's house, of course. What kind of cookie mix do you want, asked Mother. Let's say that in a softer voice. What kind of cookie mix do you want, asked Mother. I did a frown at her. I don't even want to bake cookies anymore, I said, because you still won't take me to where Miss lives. Mother rumpled my hair. Staying mad isn't going to change things, Junie B, she said. Now do you want to pick out the cookie mix or shall I? Then Mother picked out some cookie mix and she gave it to me and I throwed it in the cart very hard. Thank you, said Mother. You're not welcome, I said. After that, Mother took me outside of the store and me and her had a little talk. A little talk is when Mitt, when Mother is mad at me, and she says, Who do I think I am, Missy? And exactly how long do I think she's going to put up with me? Then I have to say apology to her. Apology is the word I'm sorry, except for you don't actually have to mean it, because nobody can ever tell the difference. After the little talk, we went back into the store. Shall we try again, asked Mother. Then she gave me another box of cookie mix and put it in the cart very nice. And I put it in the cookie, the cart very nice. That's better, she said. Thank you. You're not welcome, I said inside my head. Then I smiled to just myself, because Mother can't even hear me in there. After that, me and her went around the corner, and I saw my most favorite thing in the whole world. And its name is the water fountain. Hey, I need a drink, I said very excited. Then I run right over there and I hopped up on the little step. Need some help, called Mother? No, I said, because I'm almost six years old. That's why. And so I already know how to work this big guy. And here's another thing I know. I said, no putting your mouth on the water spout or else germs will get inside you and you will die. I smiled very proud. Polly Ellen Puffer told me that, I explained. Then I bended my head over the fountain, and I drank for a long time. Hurry up, Junie B, said Mother. I need to get the shopping done. I wiped my mouth off with my arm. Yeah, only I can't hurry up, or else I might get a stomachache and spit up water, because a boy named William did that on the playground yesterday. Mother looked at her watch. Okay, well, I'm going to be right here at the cereal aisle. So soon, as soon as you finish drinking, come directly back to me. Okie dokie, I said, very happy. Then I turned around and drank and drank and drank. Except for then, I started feeling a little bit sickish. And so I had to sit down on a little step and rest my water. That's when the big front door of the grocery store opened. And guess what? My eyes almost popped out of my head. That's what. Because I saw a big shock. And its name was Miss. My real life teacher named Miss was at the grocery store. Hmm. As a second grade teacher myself, I find this quite humorous. <laughs> Chapter five, sickish. Miss didn't see me. That's because I hided behind the water fountain speedy fast. And guess what? She had a man with her. And I never ever saw that guy before. Hey, who the heck is that? I said to just myself. <laughs> then I runned my fastest to the cereal aisle to tell mom what I saw. Only all of a sudden, I remembered about how she told me no more spying. And so maybe I might get in trouble with her, I think. Hmm. That's how come I stopped running and I started to go back to peek at Miss some more. But Mother already spotted me. Hey, where are you going? She called at me. Come here. Yeah, only I can't come there, I explained, because I just remembered something very important. And it's called, I'm not done drinking yet. Then I run back. I run right back to the water fountain. Only Miss and the strange man were already disappeared. Shoot, I said. Where did those sneaky peeps go to? After that, I had to look all over the store for those guys. First, I looked where the chocolate milk was. Then I looked where the, the pesky tea and tomato. Oh, my gosh. Mm, Pesketti and tomato sauce was and I also looked where the delicious candy was only guess where I finally found them at the sticky dumb vegetables at the stinky dumb vegetables that's where 
I quick ducked down and hide it around the corner. Then I did some sneaky peeky spying on them. I saw Miss picking out yucky bucky broccoli and, <laughs> and stewy pooey tomatoes and also the kind of vegetables named zucchini. Except for then the strange man snatched zucchini right out of her hand and he tried to put it back on the shelf. Only Miss grabbed it right back again and she pretended to hit him on the head with it. And then they both started laughing very much. That's when a very terrible thing happened. And it's called Miss and the Strange Man did a big smoochy kiss. Oh. And it was in front of the whole entire everybody. I covered my eyes. That's because I was shamed of her, of course. On account of teachers shouldn't do that smoochy thing. After that, I peeked my eyes between my fingers and I saw Miss standing at the grapes. She picked up a bunch of green kinds. Then she pulled some grapes right off the top of it. And that's when the most terrible thing of all happened. Because just then, Miss put the grapes in her mouth. And she ate them. Miss ate the grapes. And she didn't even pay for them. Oh, no. I whispered very upset. Oh, no, no, no. Because eating is the same thing as stealing, remember? And teachers aren't supposed to do stealing. Teachers aren't supposed to. Teachers are supposed to be perfecter than that because they have to set a good example for little children. After that, I felt very sickish, sickish inside my stomach on account of Miss didn't even get caught and learn her lesson because nobody saw what she did. Not the store guide, not the strange man, nobody. Nobody except me. That was the end of chapter five. We'll continue with chapter six on the next video.